Well, good Friday morning. I'm Marlon Bowling, your tour guide to the Ag Commodities. And thank you so much for joining us today here on the Market Day Report. We love talking with you about our Ag Commodity Markets. And I want to welcome aboard Mr. Brian Hoops, the president of uh, Midwest Market Solutions. He is based in Springfield, Missouri. All right, Brian, uh, looking at the overnight trade here on the quotes provided by Bar Chart, as we scan through these quotes, a little bit of weakness overnight after a big rally in the grains yesterday. March corn down two and a half. We were at 680 this morning. You had December new crop corn a penny lower. It was last trading at 589 per bushel here this morning. Let's switch over to soybeans. Remember, they had the big rally yesterday. Well, we gave back a part of it overnight. Uh, you know, March got as high as 1527 last night, but we finished up at 1518. So we shaved off about nine cents from that. We were down five and a half cents at the end of the session there. Also, we had the July down four and a quarter overnight, but it hung on to that $15 benchmark. November closed just one tick higher at $13.52 and three quarters, but it's still above $13.5. Now, on the Chicago wheat market in March, we were four and a quarter lower this morning at $7.48 and a quarter. The July new crop contract was down four. Kansas City March down seven and three quarters at $8.57 in July, down eight and a quarter. And in the Minneapolis market overnight, you had that March contract four and a half lower at 9, 13 and a half. July was down five and a quarter. And of course, we have had some big moves in the cotton. Well, it was down this morning. Uh, March at last check is now 90 points lower at 86.60. December down 86 points, but it's still above 85 cents at 85.06. So uh, let's go back to Brian. Um, Brian, I did not see any overnight export sales this morning. So kind of quiet on that front. We were getting used to seeing those every day, but now we're in that Lunar New Year celebration and just wonder if it's going to be quiet for a couple of weeks now. Yeah, good morning, Marlon. Uh, nothing to report overnight as far as the exports, as you mentioned. I don't know that it's going to be a major market mover for the trade today. Uh, you know, we've had some morning sessions this week where we've actually uh, opened lower and then started to trade higher. Uh, as the funds came in and defended their long positions. So that'll be uh, interesting to see if that happens once again. You know, they pushed this market back up near uh, last week's highs. Um, so yeah, we'll see if, if we can get that fund demand to step in once again. Um, there was a report overnight from the Buenos Aires Grain Exchange. They improved corn condition ratings to only 12% good to excellent, but it was a jump from last week. And they bumped the soybean ratings up to, I think, 7% good to excellent, a 3% move from last week. And those are some really low ratings yet, but it does tell traders that the rains that have fallen are, are stabilizing the crop that have been seeded. And now we see that the, the rest of the crop is being seeded this week. So almost all of Argentina has been seeded for corn and soybeans, and a lot of it's been uh, caught with this uh, rainfall uh, this week. So that crop, I think, is going to be off to at least a decent start, the, the second part that was just seeded this week, about half of it. Um, and so I think the trade is starting to react to that a little bit, that uh, you know we've had some rains, we stabilized the crop, and now we've got the rest of the crop planted, and uh, we may need to take a little bit of premium out of this market as a result. What about the escalating hostilities uh, around Ukraine and the Black Sea region? Uh, that added some premium, I understand, to the wheat market yesterday, but now tonight or this morning, they're kind of taking some back out, even though things are still pretty hot over there. Yeah, things uh, I don't think are going to cool down anytime soon. You know, it's been almost a year as far as tensions between Russia and the Ukraine, and maybe things are heating up a little bit. Uh, you know, we had a, a big rally last year on optimism that the U.S. would get some export business. That was not the case at all. We did not see a big surge in U.S. exports. So I don't know that we're going to be reliant upon that uh, ideas once again because it didn't happen last year. In fact, there was a report overnight that the USDA Ag Attaché uh, in uh, Australia increased their crop size to a new record large crop, over 36 million tons. So there's a lot of world competition. Of course, Russia is going to have a lot of uh, wheat to compete with. I guess you know the thing, the, qu the question, the trade will have to answer going forward is if the crop that uh, Ukraine farmers are being seeded will it be uh, you know will it be enough with the fertilizers that they have and will they produce somewhat of a decent crop this year or will right. the U.S. start to compete with that for the export business? Yeah, that's a very good point. All right, we'll come back and talk a little livestock market action with Brian Hoops right after this. 
We are back talking with Brian Hoops of Midwest Market Solutions now. I want to take a look at what's going on in the livestock sector here. Brian, what do you see uh, actually uh, impacting the livestock markets today? Because yesterday we closed the April live cattle a dollar two lower. We were at 160.52. So a lot of pressure there across the board. Feeders yesterday, we had April down a dollar 35 at 187 even. Of course, remember, we had the big rally in the corn yesterday, so I wonder if things will change in that regard today. Uh, lean hogs yesterday were higher, though, with April up $1.67 at $87 even. Now, that was based on a late-day rally. Uh, they did not have that much success early in the day, but, boy, we had those humongous export sales on the beef and the pork uh, last week. Can they build on that today, Brian? Yeah, I, you know, I think the hog market can find some more short covering in here. We we probed technical support yesterday below 84.10, and that's when the rally kind of started. We ran some stops there and then uh, ran out of sellers. Market started back up and had a lot of uh, short covering, and that's what a lot of people have been looking for in this hog market. Same thing as wheat, you know, just massive short covering trying to uh, see small rallies give us that uh, type of strength. The cattle market, we haven't seen really any cash cattle trade in the Southern Plains. Northern dress trade came in at uh, a couple dollars lower, which really hurt the, the futures yesterday. Now, packers have not really bought much cattle, like I said, in the Southern Plains at all. Uh, that's gonna have to change today. They're going to need to, to buy some cattle. They can't really go into next week short bought on cattle because that would give feedlots you know, a lot of a lot of leverage next week uh, to hold out for higher money because th they're putting together a pretty decent uh, weekly kill. Of course, Saturday's uh, inspections will be very closely noted because we're uh, seven, eight, nine thousand 9,000 head above last week's pace, putting us on a pace to kill or, uh, 660,000 head of cattle, which is uh, pretty aggressive, and that's, that's pretty bullish. One thing I did want to point out on the beef cutout values from yesterday in the afternoon update from USDA, uh, things look like maybe they have finally stabilized a little bit. Uh, we kind of turned mixed over there, and the choice cuts were 47 cents higher for a change at 268.75. Selects were down again. Uh, down 32 cents is all at 251.48. So we'll see if that has anything at all to do with our uh, cash and futures trade. Brian, great information. Thank you, sir, for all the help. Day. You have a good weekend out there. Brian Hoops of Midwest Market Solutions. So, Suzanne, the table is set. We're going to get trading here at the bottom of the hour.